Welcome to this short introduction to our newest program, Floor Diaphragm Designer for eTabs. Let's jump right in by importing a eTabs model, for which we will perform analysis of a floor diaphragm. In this case, this is a very simple model, used for demonstration the basic capabilities of the program against results that we will expect. The model consists in one floor slab that is considerably long in the X direction, and is supported laterally by two edge walls at the east and west ends. In this case, the model includes auto-seismic loads with and without accidental eccentricity, which are uniformly distributed across the slab. This can only be achieved in ETABs by using semi-rigid diaphragms. Once the model is imported, you'll need to choose the story you want to analyze from the available stories in your ETABs model. In this case, we will select story 1. Next, we will define the section cuts. These define the locations along the X and Y axes where the program calculates and reports analysis results. The start and end points indicate the locations for which a bounding rectangle will be used to create a determined number of section cuts in between, to create a grid. The start and end points can be entered manually or can be obtained from selected nodes in the ETABS model. In this case, we will select in the model. For this specific case, since the slab is long in the X direction, we will add more cuts in the X than in the Y direction. It's important to notice that this is just a template to help you get started. Any individual line geometry, including coordinates and resultant location, can be changed based on the project requirements. Furthermore, these definitions can be exported or imported to use in other projects or floors in the model. In this case, since this is a very simple example, we will go ahead and use the default locations. The locations of the lines representing section cuts are shown on the floor plan. The resultant locations are also shown as the green circles. We can also define scaling factors, which are used to scale the seismic lateral forces to diaphragm required forces. Next, we can select the load cases that we are going to use for analysis in the two orthogonal directions. We could select all, but we know that the forces that are relevant in the Y direction are seismic, step two, four, and six, and in the X are one, three, and five. This can be done simply by using control and selecting the individual cases. Now we are ready to perform our analysis. If the model already exists, the program will prompt a message asking to overwrite the file. It's important to point out that we do not change the original user's model. We clone the original model and perform all operations on that model. After a few seconds, the results are ready. Here we can scroll through results for the different load cases that were selected for analysis. We can clearly notice how the shear and moment diagrams in the Y direction are similar to an in-plane simple supported beam as was expected. For the load case without eccentricity, the results are symmetric, and for the cases with eccentricity results are shifted to one side as is expected. The results for all selected load cases are also reported in a tabulated manner using display, diaphragm section cut results. The program also offers multiple options of what to display on the screen. This can be helpful for complex models. In this case, we will turn off results in the Y direction. We can zoom in or out to review results on the screen more clearly. Now, as an additional exercise and for comparison purposes, we are going to modify the original model and add lateral supports at the top of the walls. This should result in forced diagrams that are more in line with fixed fixed boundary conditions. After modifying the model, we will import this model in the program using the new project option. As we can see, the model is unlocked. When this is the case, the program cannot find analysis results, so it will prompt the user and will run the original model automatically with all load cases turned on. We will keep the same locations for section cuts as used in the previous example. Then select the load cases. This time, we will only be reviewing results for cases acting along the Y direction which will be used to generate the diagram in the X direction. After analysis is finalized, we can clearly observe how the diagram are indeed more in line with a fixed fixed beam acting out of plane. We can again scroll through the different load cases to review results. Finally, the analysis results can be saved as a file for future review without the need to open the eTabs model or graphical results can be printed as PDF. That concludes this basic tutorial. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more detailed tutorials for this new program.